Hey guys, today we're back on the 1984 300 CD. And what I'm gonna to do today is remove the wheels, uh, do a brake inspection. Uh, I wanna replace the ball joints because although they were in good condition during the initial inspection video, that rubber boot on there is, you know, over 30 years old. So it's gonna be, you know, brittle and probably tear pretty easy in the future. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace those ball joints. Uh, tie rods all look good. Those boots are fine. Also, I want to install some Bilstein HD shocks. So these are a little bit stiffer than your normal Bilstein shock. And this is a coupe. I want to give it maximum handling. And the Bilstein HDs, I always install them on the, uh, the big SD cars because it, it limits the body roll and makes them a much better ride. Uh, it's closer to what they installed from the factory. And I want to go ahead and put them on this coupe. Uh, to limit the body roll and tighten it up just a little bit. And they still provide a really smooth, good ride. It just stiffens it up just a little bit so you don't roll back and forth as much. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, just looking at the front rotors here. There's no lip on the rotor, so I can tell that this has been changed at least once. And the pads are very thick. I would say that's like 90% life left on those pads. So uh, the pads and rotors have been, have been changed at some point, so we don't need to do anything with the front ones. Uh, same goes for the back. Those have been changed at least once. We probably have, yeah, I'd say 70% pad on the rear. So those will last, last years. No reason to change this. So let's go check the other side just to make sure. Yep, same goes here. Good pads. Yeah, very thick pads. Excellent rotor and ignore surface rust guys when if a car sits uh, in the shop for a couple of months That surface rust will get on the rotor as soon as you drive it for the first, you know 10 miles The brakes will wear that right off and it'll go back to regular looking metal Let's see. Yeah, these have been changed for sure And yep, yeah, there's excellent pad you can see the pads like as thick as my pinky finger so excellent pads and rotors. So I wanna go ahead, pop off these original shocks. And while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and slap in some new ball joints. All right, so the easiest way uh, to get access to the spindle is we can, we can unbolt this tie rod arm and we can just move that out of the way on both sides. And then we're gonna come up here and undo the uh, caliper bolt there and there and we'll just hang our caliper up on the uh, sway bar using this wire. And then we can get access to pull the, the hub and rotor and get access to our, our spindle to swap out our ball joint. Air tools are way more powerful than battery tools. See, that just came off that easy with an air tool. And I like to just loop that right through here. And then we'll tie it around here so it just hangs out of the way. And this is just like, I don't know, it's, it's a 8 or 10 gauge wire. All right, to get your grease cap off, you just put a screwdriver up against the lip. And you tap. Spin it a little bit. And you don't want to hit it too hard with the screwdriver because you'll bust through it. You'll break the metal. So you just want to tap it lightly. You can see it's starting to come off. There we go. Um, you can see here's some of the original grease from the factory. So I want to go ahead and put some, repack these bearings. And we're going to use a five millimeter to undo the spindle nut. Now this right here, this little copper piece, these are like radio interference, little copper pieces that Mercedes put in here. I'm not sure how useful they are, but it's supposed to help with radio interference, I think. All right, let's go ahead and get our Allen. 
We just want to loosen that up. And there we go. Once it's loose, you can just spin it right off by hand because these are only hand tight. That's why it has that locking Allen on there. Okay, guys. Sorry, I didn't record that. Um, I just pulled the um, pulled the rotor and hat off. And what we're left with, you can see a rotor. You see plenty of grease down there. I just want to put some fresh grease in there. Here's the bearing. Now what we want to do is take off uh, the dust shield. And that's also a five millimeter. All right, we have our dust shield off of there and we can get to our spindle. Now what I like to do is put these little dust shield bolts back in here. That way you don't lose them. And I just want to inspect our spindle. We're going to re-grease all this. Just want to see the condition. Uh, yeah, that's great condition. Check for any kind of nicks or uneven wear, or any of that stuff. Yeah, feels great. Excellent condition. All right, so now we're gonna lower the car down, and I'll break that nut loose on the upper control arm, and then we're gonna put a little jack stand under the control arm just so it can kind of rest on there and we don't have a, we don't have to worry about our spring flying out and then we'll break that lower ball joint loose. Okay, the method I'm gonna show you guys uh, now is how to remove this spindle and get your ball joint out uh, without compressing and removing the spring. Now you gotta make sure, this is dangerous if you don't do it correctly. So I have a jack under here so that control arm can't shoot down and release the spring. The shock, I've also inspected the original shock to make sure there's no cracking and make sure this is not broken down here. And we're also making sure the shock is securely attached up here because that shock will uh, also hold, uh, hold the spring in place. So rather than removing that spring, now we're gonna break loose this 17 millimeter, break that loose and then this will come down and, and then we can come down here, spin that, undo the ball joint nut, and then knock our ball joint out of there on the bench. Now we'll break that loose. And guys, when you use this tool to break that loose, you want to put some grease on here so you don't tear up your upper ball joint boot because you don't need to change these upper control arms for a long time. They're still in good condition. So you wanna make sure that you don't tear the boot. And that's why you grease that up. So I'll slide that in there like that. And I'll put a little helper bar in here just to get the leverage a little better. Like that. There we go. See how we broke that loose up there? We have to go do it on the other side too to get enough leverage. Uh, so the uh, sway bar has enough leverage to pop out and then we can pull that down and pull that out. Okay, now that the other side is loose, see how it gave us some more room to work with? And we can just pull this sway bar up, push it up, I'm sorry, and then pull that out. And now we can get access to the uh, ball joint bolt right there. And then we can get our ball joint uh, breaker tool and pop that loose. All right, guys, I show this in all the videos. Uh, let's see, OTC8149. And big shout out to Impala Man's channel because he pointed out that this tool will work on the Mercedes. And basically, it is a ball joint separator. So, there we go, that's on there. Now let's go ahead and get our impact, run that down. We'll hold on to our spindle because it'll fall out. There we go. There we go, that's out of there. Let's go knock in, uh, knock out our old ball joint and knock in our new one. All right guys, this is one of those uh, barbaric techniques when working on old cars um, 
but this is the best way to get out a ball joint. You gotta get it in your vise and use a slug and a five pound hammer. Now what's important is you move your hand when you hit it because when that goes through, if your hand's on there, it's gonna take your hand with it into the ball joint hole and it will hurt you very badly. There we go, I got it started. Here it comes. All right, there it goes. The ball joint is out of there. So, yeah, those things are a little loose. They're still good, but that's just, I wanted to change them because this is just a super nice car. All right, now let's get these to the wash tank. Let's clean them up and let's paint them real nice. Get them looking good again. Guys, y'all see me use this wash tank all the time. This is probably one of my favorite tools in the shop. I've put entire 617 diesel engines in here, the entire block. I clean all the suspension. They're just uh, a big wash tank is such a valuable asset in a shop because it allows you to clean things up and make them really nice again. All right, let's get those dried off, get the ball joints pressed in and get them repainted. Guys, I know this is a little OCD, but this is how I like to clean up the little uh, the little bolts that hold the dust shield on. You just put them in a cup and wash them around a little bit. And all that beautiful cadmium plating is revealed again. Look how nice those look. Yeah, a little OCD, guys, but that's how I like to do it. Guys, this is one of my favorite suspension tools. It's a custom-made tool. Uh, gosh, I think you can get these on eBay or Amazon. Let's see, MBA1036 Komen Tools. Komen Tools, MBA1036. Um, it's a ball joint press for 126 and 123 spindles. And what you do, you get your ball joint, and of course you set it where it needs to go. I like to roll them over a little bit. There we go, like that. And then this piece sits underneath it. And it's a little bit wider than the hole is, so it lets the ball joint come down into it. Um, but this tool, see how it's cut out? It actually fits around. Let's see if I can turn this around to show you guys. There you go. It actually slips over the ball joint and presses on the top of it and then fits around the curve of the spindle. So it makes it a straight vertical line to press in the ball joint. Pretty cool design, uh, but it makes it makes life really easy with these ball joints. And get everything lined up here. So let me zoom in now, see if you guys can see this. All right, y'all can see the bottom of the ball joint there. Now, as I run the press down, see it pressing in there? A little bit more. A little bit more. There we go, guys. We are seated in there. See how quick that was when you have the right tool? And then we'll pull our tool off. And there we go. See how it perfectly pushed in the ball joint? And you wanna look at the bottom, make sure it's perfectly flush around the bottom. And that's a perfect fit. So let's go ahead and do the other side and get these things painted. All right, so now that we're gonna paint them, what I like to do is put the cover, I'll straighten them out, and then put the cover back on it so when I paint it, it doesn't paint the ball joint. All right, guys, before we paint these, I wanna wipe them down with acetone, and it gets any oil and grease. Even though we just went in the parts washer, parts washers leave a little bit of 
residue behind so your metal doesn't rust. So we'll go ahead and wipe these down with acetone. And that'll get any oil and grease off of there. And then these guys will be ready to paint. And guys, the stuff that works really well for suspension is the uh, Duplicolor engine enamel. The stuff works excellent, lasts a long time. Uh, you can use low gloss, see there, low gloss or semi gloss. Either one of them is uh, pretty much factory correct. Beautiful. We'll let those dry. Got our new ball joints in there. And then we'll get those back on the car. All right. We have our beautifully refinished control arm. I'm sorry, spindle with our fresh ball joint in there. Look how nice that looks now. So let's go ahead and get this guy back in the car. Pretty simple, guys. Just stick it up in there. And we'll put our nut on there. And we'll torque that guy down. And then we'll reattach it to the top up here. And then we're going to pop out our shock and replace it with our Bilstein HD shock. Okay, we have our freshly painted, cleaned up spindle with a new ball joint in there. And now let's go ahead and take these shocks out. So we want to start by removing the two nuts from the top. Okay, you can see I have my jack stand back under here. And I've got a little weight on the car. And the reason I'm doing that is because that loads, uh, removes the load uh, from the shock. And sometimes that can make it easier uh, to get the nuts off. And then sometimes when you put the load back on, it keeps the shock from spinning. So it's kind of a juggling act to see which one works better. I have a shaved down 17 millimeter. And it's shaved down. That way I can get it around uh, the nut, the bottom nut here, and it will not interfere with the top nut. So that way I can easily take off that top nut. Now for you guys that are used to dealing with northern cars, yeah, good luck it being this easy. But our cars don't rust down here or out west. So this stuff is really easy for us. There you go, that's done. And then we'll remove the bushing, or the cover plate, and the bushing and set those aside. Now guys, I like to reuse this original hardware rather than the nylon uh, lock nut that Bilstein provides. Uh, because those, those nylon lock nuts, they can cause problems when you try to remove them because they're locked in place, you can't get them off. The way these work, they, they lock against each other. And so when you loosen one up, the other one will freely uh, come off and it's much easier to remove. The original Mercedes hardware is the way to go. So to get this shock out now, we can just compress the shock. And then we'll turn the spindle out of the way. And there you go. Now we can get access back here to the 10 millimeter bolt. It's a 12 point and there's one on the front. So we'll go ahead and remove those and get this shock out of here. Okay, now that those 10 millimeters are out, we can simply take, simply take the shock out. And the first thing we wanna look at, remove the cover and check out the bump stop. This bump stop is in excellent condition. So we're absolutely gonna reuse, the, reuse that. We're also gonna clean up our original protective cover because it's also in excellent condition. So we'll clean that up, remove the bump stop and get our new Bilstein on there. Guys, this is fantastic. Bilstein actually included a new protective cover and a new bump stop. You see, there's our, our old cover and our old bump stop right there. And it's hit or miss with Bilstein, guys. Sometimes they do not include those. It's like every other or every second or third kit I get, they actually include the original stuff. So that's great. We're going to go ahead and use this new stuff. Let's see how similar it is. That's exactly the same as the original uh, Bilstein that was put on the car from the factory. And we can also see they have a metal sleeve down in there that makes it firm up at the top. 
and that's uh in the original Bilstein's they did not have that so that's cool that's like an added feature that Bilstein has uh has done to the shock that's pretty cool all right let's go ahead and get these onto the car all right guys there we go we have our fresh hardware in there two 10 millimeter bolts our boot cover and it's going up through the top now the the bushing goes underneath this cover it doesn't go on top of the cover it goes underneath it and now we need to put the jack stand under there uh jack stand under here compress the suspension a little bit and it'll push it up all the way and then we can put our nut back on the top okay i put the fresh bushing in there now you'll notice there is only one nut on here i have to put the car the wheels back on and put it under full load of the suspension so it'll actually push the shock up far enough to get both nuts on here. Now we're going to go ahead and tackle the other side. Uh, I've already done the suspension off camera. And we're going to go ahead and remove the air cleaner housing because we need to get access. There it is right there. Okay, once you get those off. And I've already loosened the band clamp around the turbo. That will go ahead and pull up. We can just wiggle that forward. And actually, that is good. It just needs a nut on the bottom of it. And guys, this is extremely rare. Um, you see the little cups that each of these is sitting in? Those are the factory like heat shields uh, that came on the cars. It is so rare to see that. Um, because guys always throw these things away when they're changing the, uh, or mechanics always throw these things away when they're changing the bushings. So we're going to just go ahead and get a 10 millimeter nut put on the back of there. And uh, look, it still has the cadmium on this original air cleaner housing mounting bracket. So that's really cool. Anyway, I got sidetracked. Let's go back to uh, working on the shock. But you guys get the idea. I'm just doing the same thing over here that you guys have already seen on the other side. So I'll probably just cut all this out of the video. This is our AC manifold line here. We'll remove that or just move it out of the way. And go ahead and take off our nuts on top of the shock. So guys, I'm not gonna record doing this side again. Um, I'll, I'll show the air cleaner housing when we fix these bushings and the shock reinstalled. One thing I do wanna point out is how incredibly clean it is under here. Look at that. There's no oil or anywhere. It even still has some of that original paint on the exhaust manifold. Exhaust manifolds are painted like, I think it's a high temperature paint. And look, the paint is still on here. That's pretty amazing to see that on one of these cars. Even the cadmium plating that you still see on, on the bracket and the oiling uh, line for the turbo. See, it's still got the cadmium. That means this car was really, really well taken care of. All right, guys. We have our new Bilstein HD shock in there. New ball joint, refinished spindle. Also cleaned up the spring so I could expose, you know, the original uh, paint. But keep in mind, Scott is going to detail this. He's going to get all up in the wheel wells and uh, make it look brand new in here. So that's done. We just need to reattach our uh, tie rods. Pull that over here, and that'll reattach to the bottom of the spindle. And then we're going to go work on the back shocks. Guys, there's one thing I want to point out before you reattach the little arm that attaches to the tie rod, you want to add some blue Loctite to the bolts. Uh, Mercedes used blue Loctite, and it says to apply it. So we're going to add some blue Loctite before torquing those back down. All right, and to put those back in, you literally give it a couple of ugga duggas. Once you get it tight, you just run it down. And that will never come off. Okay, keep in mind, we gotta still uh, reassemble our hubs and rotors and calipers. 
So I've cleaned out these bearings, and uh, the bearings are in excellent shape. These are uh, Tempkin, made in Australia. Um, so these are these are excellent bearings. No Chinese crap here. So we're going to go ahead and just repack these bearings, and that's how you do it, guys. You want to try to get up in the edge right there, and just pack it around there, and get all that grease up in there. All right, you can see I've also globbed a bunch of fresh grease down here around the inner bearing. And uh, this seal is in excellent condition, so I'm not going to bother with busting that off and putting in a new seal because it's great condition. we got plenty of good fresh grease in there now. Okay, we've got our dust boot back on. We want to torque these down. Remember, blue Loctite. The Germans put blue Loctite on almost every single uh, bolt. So... Reapply it when you're reapplying this stuff. The engineers did that for a reason. All right, now that that's on, I like to go ahead and coat our spindle with a little grease uh, and lubricate it real nice before putting the hub back on. So let's go ahead and there's where the bearing rides right there. There's where the seal rides. And it just makes it uh, makes the surface nice. There we go. Now let's go ahead and slip the hub back on. All right. Here we go, guys. Now I like to also clean off the grease from around the end of the spindle, so you don't have problems putting the spindle nut back on. A liquid is not compressible. Grease is a liquid, so you don't want to get it in the threads. Okay, once the hub and rotor and bearing are back on, you can screw back on your spindle nut. Now, this is, a, see, you can't really put a wrench on here. It's made to do by hand. And the way you know how tight to make it, so you've screwed it down. See, I've got play in the spindle. I mean, in the, uh, in the hub, so we want to snug it up. I've still got play. Still got play, still, okay, there it went away, so I backed it off a little bit, there we go, I don't know if you guys can hear that, there we go, that's how you want it, and once you have it set, you want to tighten down your lock nut. And that holds your wheel on. <laughs> kind of sketchy, huh? But that's how all uh, classic cars work. I don't know about modern cars because I don't work on modern cars. But all the classic cars <laughs> work like that. All right. Now we're going to put in our little copper piece in the end. Like that. Um, now we have uh, gotten all the old grease out of our bearing cap. And the Mercedes Field Service Manual says put fresh uh, grease in the bearing cap or the grease cap. And we'll put that on there. Now you just tap it on with a hammer as you spin. There we go. That is finished. Now we need to clean everything up with brake cleaner and then reattach our caliper. And keep in mind, guys, Scott is going to detail all of that. There's just some dirt from driving the car. Let's go ahead and attach the caliper. Let me get the caliper bolts. And again, you want to use Loctite on your caliper bolts. There we go. There's our nice new ball joint. And you see we've got Loctite on the caliper bolts. There we go. Now let's get our 19 millimeter, torque those down. Now let's get our torque wrench. Now 
All right, done with that side. All right, guys, we are done servicing the suspension, shocks, ball joints, lubricating the bearings, putting everything back together uh, for the front. Uh, now we need to put on the wheels, lower the car, get some pressure on the shocks so we can reattach the nuts on top. And then we're moving to the back of the car and doing the rear shocks.